is up guys so today I wanted to go over my build because I get a lot of questions on how I made the 500 horsepower on the stock ECU so I do want to clarify that this is a GTE engine with a GTE Aristo ECU not a GE not a stock IS 300 ECU so I do want to get that out of the way but let's go over some things so here we have the engine on the engine stand so I do want to go over some stuff I have the piping on because I want to show you the biggest improvement that I did was move the MAF sensor right here on the throttle body side of the charge piping. That made the biggest difference. So this allows you when you don't, like, or if you run like a blow off valve that's not recirculated or don't run a blow off valve like me, the car would normally stall out if it was on the intake of the turbo. But moving it over there prevents that, so you lose that, the car runs smoother, everything runs better, and you're able to run the 4-inch intake on the turbo. Bigger intake on the turbo helps with quicker spool times. So let's just set on there. Now moving on to the turbo setup, this started out as a CX Racing complete like uh, turbo setup for a GTE. So the manifold... CX Racing, it had a CX Racing wastegate and a CX Racing turbo. I ran the turbo for three years until I switched to this Pulsar 3576R, which we'll get to more on, and then about two years on the CX wastegate. It was working fine when I pulled it, but when I went to pull it and change the spring, there was bolts that hold the hold it together, and there was only two left in there. So, uh, note, if you're going to run the CX one, Put some uh, thread locker on the bolts that hold the wastegate together. I opted to upgrade to the Turbo Smart. I think it's the yeah the 45 mil. So I upgraded to that. Um, in the dyno video that I posted like a year ago, I was running the CX Racing Turbo, which was a journal bearing. GT35 is what they called it. I don't know the full specs on it, but I was able to make 500 horsepower on 17 PSI with that. If you haven't seen that video be sure to check it out so I never got to dyno it on this turbo which kind of sucked because I wish I did and you may be wondering why it's on the stand well that's because I blew it up I know you're thinking oh well that's because you're running the stock ECU well I thought I finally pushed the limits of it but I found something else so it did not blow up because of the ECU it blew up because of me and something I preach so much is maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. And I overlooked one thing, and it bit me in the butt, and I blew the engine. And it's a very costly mistake. And it sucks, so I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, so if you see these lines here on the back of the head, these normally run to the heater core. Well, my car's caged. I don't have a heater core or anything. So most people cap these off. It's really stupid to do because it can create hot spots in the head. You know, you can have a lot of beneficiary by running these or loop even looping them will help with the cooling so I had this great idea I'll run these to another cooler so it basically asks it basically acts as a a extra radiator so you notice that one of these lines is on and one is off well the push lock hose popped off just happened to be when I was running 100% water on the engine. So I didn't smell anything. My temp gauge read 220. Nothing. It did not seem like anything out of the ordinary. That was obvious like it would normally be when you're overheating. So I was recently at an event driving it. And I noticed that the temperatures, they would get to 220, which was normal at the end of a run. And it would normally cool down to 180. Well, it wasn't really cooling down that quick. So I just let the car sit with the fans on. Didn't notice really anything. Let it cool down. Went back out and run. Same thing. Went up to 220. And I was following my friend Mike in one of the runs. And he always forgets to turn his fans on. Always forgets to turn his fans on. And he sprays water and coolant all over my car. Well... We're doing a run. I see a little bit of water come on my windshield. And at the end of the run, I said, hey, are your fans on? I saw some water on the windshield. He says, yeah, my fans are on. Maybe it's your car. No, it's not my car. 
I'm only at 220. Well, it was my car. So I continued to run, continued to run. Then it started misfiring, and it just died. And I thought, you know, that the car had leaned out. You know, new turbo, it's bigger. Finally pushed the limits. But then when I took it apart, I found the hose was disconnected, and there was only a quart in a quart of water in the radiator. Now I normally run some coolant with water, but I ran clutch kickers, and you, the rule book says you got to run 100% water. So I put 100% water in the engine. So that's why I think I couldn't smell anything because it was just basically steam. I didn't see any water. My mistake. Totally overlooked by me. It really sucks, but you live and you learn, and now I know. Always run either a real AN hose or put a hose clamp on that thing, because something so simple could have prevented all this. And now I need a new engine, most likely. We're going to tear into it, though. Just some other upgrades that I did have on here. This was also after the dyno. I don't think that would make a difference in horsepower. I just did it for reliability because the 2J cranks are known to break. Um, this right here, this is a setup I got from Adam. They run this setup on the E36 BMW because they were throwing belts all the time. And I started throwing belts and they had an extra one. So I was able to get that from the, him. So that helped out a lot. I don't know fully detailed about this setup. I gotta take it apart and see what, what all the details are to it and how to recreate it. Um, just going over some other things. Obviously, we got the fish racing oil cap, the carbon cover. We were running stock rail, stock fuel regulator, and stock JDM 440cc injectors. Now, as far as I know, this engine is completely stock on the inside, all the way to the head bolts. It looks like it has never been opened up. All I did was replace valve cover gaskets, timing belt, all those seals. I did do spark plugs, which were NGK, BK, 7REs, gap to about 20 thousandths. I'm um, just trying to think what else. Back over to the turbo setup. I did add a lot of like heat management stuff. This is just good stuff. Like a lot of this stuff is so close to like the manifold and the turbo. I One thing I didn't use from the CX kit was the drain line. I built my own drain line, heat wrapped everything. Um, manifold is still good, no cracks. Still using the downpipe from that as well. This is an 82 housing on the Pulsar Turbo. This thing works great. I really do like it. I'm glad I upgraded to that, the ball bearing. I might switch to a V-band exhaust housing and drop it down to the 68. Just because I'm not looking for peak power. Uh, I just want it to be linear and just the power to come on quick. Uh, also just, you know, stock throttle body. Basically everything else is stock, you know. I really just try to maintain the car and just make sure everything is good and not really rigged. Sometimes you gotta rig stuff, it happens. Unfortunately, this happened. And like I said, it was a costly mistake, but now I know. I do have a 2JZ GE complete as a spare. I wanna tear this one apart first and see how much I can reuse. I really like to use the cylinder head from this because then I can reuse the exhaust manifold. I'll have the good intake manifold and stuff. And then I'll probably just do the upgrade the rods and pistons in the GE. It'd be ideal if these rods were okay in this um, and I was able to reuse them. There's no holes in the block. Uh, basically the compression just is like non-existent. It was like 50, 50, 50, 30, 25, and 10. So I'm assuming that the cylinders just got super hot and the pistons melted. But like I said, we're going to tear into it and we're going to see what's wrong with it in the next video. So I just wanted to go over the setup. I get a lot of questions all the time on what I did and you know what injectors. They are stock injectors. I bypassed the, I think it's the factory, uh, the pulse dampener for the fuel rail and I just run the line right here. I do run an AM 340 pump and 100 octane race gas. So. All of that on the old turbo, 17 PSI, 
It made 501 to the wheels. Now, a lot of people accused me of being a liar, and they went on Google Calculator, and they said, I calculated on Google that 440 cc's could never make 500 horsepower. Okay, well, I did it in real life. So, I'm sorry that Google Calculator says I'm a liar, because I did it in real life. Now, do some dinos read higher? It's possibly that's the case, but I did not fly about my numbers. I recorded it. I showed you what the dyno said. This is what the dyno said. Whether it be 450 on another dyno. It's still a pretty good number, especially for drifting. So, four to 500 horsepower. That's really all you need for a basic drift car if you're not doing major competitions. Now, I did run this in clutch kickers in round four. It was the only round I was able to do. And my boost controller, which is now replaced, was this guy here, a manual boost controller. I know, called me old school. I went around the pits asking if anybody had a manual boost controller. Everybody was like, no, we have a standalone. Stand alone. We just control it that way. So I got stuck running wastegate pressure at clutch kickers, which was only 8 PSI. So it was kind of a struggle because the turbo was pretty laggy because it was out of its efficiency range. Now, once I turn this thing up to like 14, which I'm going to put some clips at the end of the video to show you because I know some people wanted to see some videos with the Pulsar turbo on there. So I will include those, but once I turn the boost up just a little bit, this thing just really came alive. Oh, so it came on strong, like 3,700 RPM. So it felt really good. So I can't wait to dive into this thing, figure out what we can use, make some few improvements. Definitely redo those lines so that does not happen again. And just really get this thing just super reliable good power range, linear, like I said, linear, linear, linear. That's what I care about. I don't care about the peak number anymore. I'm going to keep the factory ECU, even though everybody told me not to. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to do a radium rail, and I have some GTR 550cc injectors that we're going to upgrade to. I'm going to do all that. Like I said, maybe switch this exhaust housing just so I can try to get it to where it hits at like 3200 RPM. That would be really cool. I really only want it to be like four to 450 horsepower reliability. And yeah, just have fun with it. So stay tuned for the next video when we tear this thing apart and see how bad, how bad I damaged it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna include some clips at the end of this thing. Just, just taking the abuse for the last four years I gave it everything. Every time I drove this thing, it was full throttle. You know, everybody told me it's never going to last on the stock ECU. Well, it gave me four years, and it failed because of me. So, big L on me. Big W for the stock ECU. So, enjoy these clips. Thanks, guys.